You want PWBA Tour storylines? We have them. How about the reigning player of the year looking for a fifth title of 2019? How about the last woman to roll 300 game on TV? And by the way, it was only two tournaments ago. How about a Hall of Famer looking for a first title of the season? How about a star lefty looking for a first title since 2006? And at the top of the list, a gold medalist from last week's Women's World Championships all the way from Singapore. We have the best in PWBA Tour Storylines today from Raleigh, North Carolina. Raleigh has it all. The capital city of North Carolina is home to NC State, the NHL Hurricanes, and today PWBA Bowling from Buffalo Lanes North Family Bowling Center is the 2019 Cubica AMF PWBA Players Championship, the third of four majors of the 2019 tour season. This is Dave Ryan alongside my Hall of Fame broadcast partner Kelly Gulick and tour star Stephanie Johnson. Here in the step ladder finals, we start with the five seed Shannon O'Keefe, who's wrapped up her second straight Player of the Year award against the young superstar Dasha Koval. Oh, what a match that's going to be. The winner takes on the legend Liz Johnson. The Hall of Famer goes for a 25th career title. Then it's the lefties. The number two seed Shannon Pulhowski tries for her second career championship. And the top seed fellow Southpaw Sherry Tan of Singapore. Stephanie Johnson is a third member of our broadcast team, the defending champion of this event, winning last year in Plano, Texas, the Dallas Metroplex, beating Kelly for the title in the bowling center where she works and she practices. And she's now joined by the top seed, Sherry Tan. Sherry, you are fresh off the World Championships last week with a gold medal win in the Masters event. How do you feel last week prepared you for this week? It was an awesome feeling um, that I got to win for Singapore. And I think that gave me the confidence and morale booster that I needed coming into this week. And also next week is our season ending event, the Tour Championships, and a win today secures your spot. What's it gonna take? I guess one shot at a time, focus on my pre-shot routine and Let's see where it goes. Dave and Kelly, back to you. Hey, Steph, thanks. Top seed is ready. Kelly, our future for the sport oil pattern today. Yeah, Dave, that beautiful flex machine going down the lane. You see the length, 49 feet, volume very, very low. Longer patterns tend to play closer to the head pin, but the women start mostly around the 8 10 board area. Because the length at 49 feet, there's only 11 feet left from the foul line to the head pin at the end of the oil pattern. Angles are going to be tight and straight, and the lefties are going to be here all on their own. They're not going to move in too fast or too deep. Let's see who prevails and comes out tonight's champion. Time to bowl in Raleigh. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number five seed from Shiloh, Illinois, Shannon O'Keefe. By virtue of points, on Friday, Shannon wrapped up Player of the Year for a second straight season. A true superstar of the sport. Now off to a great start. Trying for a fifth title of 2019. She has run away from the competition this year on tour. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number four seed from Ukraine, Dasha Kovalova. The young star from Ukraine who now calls Wichita, Kansas home. She has the Wichita Shocker colors. Two titles this year. Unforgettable 300 game in Louisville. Making women's bowling history. Dasha. A little high, looking for a little help. And the seven stands. Both women out of the gate. Shannon starts off with a strike. Dasha with that seven pin as it stands there. Both ladies playing in the same part of the lane. You'll see Dasha slide somewhere around 14, 15, about 7, 8 at the arrow. Shannon's a bit deeper. The trickiness about this pattern is 49 feet. So the ball can look like it's going towards a pocket in the last second, break very hard towards the head pin, and leave some complicated splits. Seven pin. That's fair for the youngster. Mom Oksana memorably was with her in Louisville 
Yeah, and for quite a few of the tour stops leading up to the World Championships in Vegas last week. What a reaction she had. I think she may have been more excited than <laughs> Dasha was when the 12th and final shot was put up by Dasha and the strike. What a moment that was. I'll never forget that. Same here. Great shot. One three pocket. And Blitz is through the rack. No worries. Andy Player, speaking of 300, for those of 300 game during today's telecast, we'll receive a $10,000 bonus courtesy of GoBowling.com. Visit GoBowling.com to find local bowling centers, get tips from the pros, and for all the latest news and information about your favorite sport, bowling. I asked Asha what she was going to do with the money. She said, just kind of saving it up, you know, putting it smart, aside. Smart. Maybe invest somewhere down the road. Back to Shannon. Call 10 back. Keys for Shannon this week, she really focused on her soft hand. I mean, we all know the aggressiveness of her follow through and she really likes to be firm when she's up the lane, but she really worked hard this season, kind of calming down her speed a little bit, allowing that hand to be a little bit soft at the bottom. Reason why her success that she's had all year long. It's a big message to us in our pre-match interview. She's trying not to get so grabby at the bottom. Upon release, really felt like she had control of the one three pocket. Earning the five seed today. She's done it all. She's been the top seed in one. She's climbed the ladder. Big challenge today from the five spot. Left lane for Shannon. Yes. Oh, ten back again. So she's enjoying the Player of the Year run a little more this year than last. Where she said she's obsessed with it. And she's told us several times that she got her stressed out. Yeah. This year, she's enjoyed the ride. Yeah, she's, uh, what really fascinated me with, with her interview is that it's a continuation. So it's not just one year or one season or one month. It's just one continuation from one event to the next to the next. So the years just kind of overflow into each other. How will Dasha respond? Pretty well. What a matchup in our first competition of the day here for Morale. Two major stars. Both women in their comfort zone. There's Dasha with her five-step approach. I love here her eyes just intently focused on her target. And that says, she told me yesterday, one of the keys to her success is just being able to look at her target and hit it over and over and over again. Never falls off balance. So accurate. Probably two of the top accurate bowlers out here on tour. Win probability numbers. It's early, but she has a big advantage there, and there's our first split of 4 9. I thought that was great off her hand, Dave. Really was. Just caught a, a bit of a dry spot down the lane. You'll see the ball all of a sudden start to check up really hard right at the end of, again, 49 feet, only 11 feet left. So when it does see the friction, it's going to turn very aggressively towards that head pin. Four nines. We saw a lot of three, six, seven, ten splits this week, big fours. So don't be surprised if you see a string and then all of a sudden a split shows up. Can she convert? No. Nine stands early open. And the way Shannon O'Keefe is bold on TV, just crushing the competition. A six and one TV record entering our matches here today. That I'd say a she's a big problem for Dasha. <laughs> Any mistake is an, an issue against Shannon. She definitely has the mojo again. Just all that hard work and effort she's put in the last two years. The coaching at the collegiate level has definitely helped her. She sees it faster by working with her young ladies. The help from her, her coach and also working with her husband and everyone at the Ebonite staff. She's really prevailed and it does well. With shots like that. Best player in the world. As of right now, you said a day four step approach. She kind of walks away on step number three. Back swing is only at the height of the shoulder. Left arm is out to the side and balance. She's got great core stability, as strong and as athletic as she is. And then again, that follow through, even with the soft hand, she still continues to follow through. One of the most accurate players out here on tour and great executioner. She really can execute in times of pressure situations. All-American softball player in college and then turned to bowling full time. Tremendous athlete. Left lane for Shannon. Inside. Whoa. Trouble there for sure. Left off her hand. You saw that, didn't you? Yep. Again, when you're soft at the bottom of the swing and you want to be aggressive, it sometimes just comes across too quickly. Pull down from the top of the swing in the shoulder. You'll see she just misses way, way left. Hand got around it much faster. 
She's been right around on the edge of that outer light boards around board eight and nine. That one clearly deep inside around 12, 13. Came in Orlando a couple weeks back, the last tour stop, trying for a third title in the last four tour events. It's a tricky spare with the sleeper. Got a lot to cover there. Boy, you're right. Called perfectly by Kelly. A line up and an open. So back to back opens. And Dasha may have been stressed out for a moment, but she's right back in the game. Dasha, one of the more creative, interesting people you'll meet. <laughs> We've talked about her graphic artistry. Very talented. She has a graphic novel in the works. She's not just a bowler. Much more than that. Oh, Avoids a split, and back there's back that nine lines. pin. Yeah. So there's an adjustment there for as, as long as the pattern is. It's just a two and one, maybe even just a one and one. The ladies kept their angles really tight in front of them. You can see eight, nine. Ball starts to pick up, and it, it's really the directional change is really, really smooth up until the last moment. And so high on the head pin, it's good break that she just left the nine pin by itself. Are you looking for some great PWBA gear? Then visit the official online store of PWBA at shoppwba.com. What's your favorite item, Kelly? I like both fearless shirts, great. Oh, I'm a sweatshirt guru, so yes. I love sweatshirts. Any That's type of jumpers, really hoodies like that. Yeah, I collect sweatshirts, so some of my favorites, because even in summer, I can walk into a bowling center, be 65 and freeze. <laughs> yeah, got to be comfortable all times. Moves off the 4-9, last frame. Flat 10. Really good move, good adjustments after that 4-9 break. Dasha told me what she's really looking forward to, Dave, is mm -hmm. getting to Richmond next week. She's so excited. She's never qualified before. And the elite field who gets there, really, they, they're addressed with maybe some new apparel. You might have seen some of the women walking around the bowling centers. So she's excited to see what she's going to get and proud to wear that PWA gear that the women receive. She deserves it. Hashtag bowl fearless. Hashtag road to Richmond. There's 10 pin. What a story Dasha has been this year, bursting on the scene. And one Kelly Kewitt predicted that. I remember that before the swing that she had a huge season, and she has midway through. Match number one for Raleigh Moore coming up. Past champions of this event, true legends of the game, including Liz Johnson, who's won this championship in 2001 and 2017. Joined now by Stephanie. Liz, your outstanding resume speaks for itself with 24 professional women's titles, 11 of which are majors. What do you feel makes you one of the greatest of all time? Well, I've always attributed that to a really good mental game and a very good positive attitude. Um, and I also feel like my, my spare game has always been successful. But um, literally before, right before we got over here, my uh, watch told me to breathe. So, you know, a lot of breathing over, over time, and uh, that's what I'm going to try to do today. All right, back to you guys. Smart watches, Steph. They, <laughs> they do it all, right? <laughs> just breathe, Liz. Just breathe. Six frame here. Great opening match between two tour superstars. In Kovalova, the youngster, and Shannon O'Keefe. Player of the year again. Up by 19 pins. Sixth frame, but works on an open here. Good shot off her hand. That's how you respond. Yep. Off the open and the commercial break. Head straight back. Yeah, unfortunately, one of the fifth frame was just, you know, totally operator error. She just pulled down from the top of the swing, got the hand, got around it much, much faster. Missed inside her target, but right there on line. Ball splits the 8-9. Back on the striking wagon. With Stephanie, the gold medal in the doubles competition, Pan Am Games in Lima, Peru this year. I think the O'Keefe's need a new room for all the trophies and the hardware <laughs> that Shannon's bringing home. It's incredible. Left right. lane. Yes. On the money. Well, they, they just made room for a hot tub. <laughs> so they had to That's put that in. That's important, too. That is. Well, actually, I did. I asked Shannon, you know, you're so on demand. You're, you're going from college bowling now back to university now here finishing up the ladies tour what do you guys do for to relax and she said they use the hot tub now she likes to go tanning even if it's 10 or 15 minutes it's just that 
solid, solitary time to herself where she can just kind of relax and unwind. Dasha responds with a strike. We're talking Dasha, you got to talk about the 300 game. Absolutely. Many great moments in 2019, possibly as great as Dasha Kovalo, a 300 game win the Pepsi PWBA Louisville Open, defeating Liz Johnson on our show here today in the final match. Fourth all time televised 300 game with Mom Oksana there. And there's the list. 97, 99, 01, and this year, the last had been Liz 18 years earlier, just the storylines intertwined. And we spoke with Liz this week about watching Dasha against her in the title match, Rule 300, to make women's bowling history. And she had an interesting reaction. We'll talk about it. Dasha left lane and seven down. She said it was really emotional. I mean, hard to watch because she lost. She got teared up a little bit at the same time, but she appreciated the greatness of Dasha. Yeah, now watch this shot by Dasha. The ball actually hooks twice. First time there, about right on this level, and then all of a sudden it's going to hook again right down here in front of the head pin. So right now she's hitting a lot of friction in the lane. Lanes are starting to transition, Dave. Shannon, her tilt is able to stay on line a little bit longer. Dasha has a little bit more forward roll to the bowling ball, so it's going to see the friction roll forward off of it, but react even harder to it. 3 6 10 spare. She makes it no problem. So there is seeing some breakdown. Uh, Liz Johnson's going to come up. She's going to be next to in the same area of both ladies as they're bowling right now. But Shannon O'Keefe has a 29 pin lead going into the eighth frame. Only that one open back in frame number five. Six for seven strikes. And again, it's just the way the women roll the ball off their hand is why the ball is reacting to the lanes the way it does. Big shot here. Go up by 39. You bet. All 10 back. High 60 flush. feet to success. A perfect shot from Shannon O'Keefe. And it's why you're player of the year two straight years and been so dominant. Big shots like that when your opponent has stumbled a bit. Liz Johnson. Budget when you serve from a moment ago. The smart watch says breathe. We'll see how he responds. Back on TV again, the legend. Against the winner of this one. Looks to go up by 49 pins. Will do it. For Ms. Tiki and Tierney. Weekdays at 3 on CBS Sports Network. Dasha. Responds nicely. Yeah, max score for Dasha 215, 264 for Shannon O'Keefe if she goes off. So really, if Shannon stays clean, she's pretty much in control going on to that next match against Liz Johnson. For Dasha, that memorable celebration outside the Boeing Center in Louisville. Chuck Gugger, ball rep, and uh, lured her out. <laughs> that was I, funny. My, I got my phone out just one second too late. And she was doused with sports energy drinks, among other beverages. <laughs> and she told us this week that was unforgettable. That part was something she'll always really cherish. How many fellow bowlers and ball reps were celebrating with her? She's so well liked. This one is over. She will not have a second major championship. Running into Shannon O'Keefe is no easy matter, but a great season so far for Dasha. We'll see her in Richmond. Absolutely, Dave. The only thing is, is had she won this title, she would have been the number two seed going into Richmond next right. week. So I believe she still receives a bye for only one round, whereas Shannon and now Danielle McEwen will be the number one and two seed going into Richmond next week. Danielle, the U.S. Open champ this year in Las Vegas. Chatting with husband Brian, fellow bowling coach at McKendry, and Team USA bowling coach as well. Pretty good advice from Brian. Shannon looks good in match number one. No problem with the young star, Dasha Kovalova. She'll face Liz Johnson next. Here at Raleigh, Shannon O'Keefe starts off. The Players' Championship, an impressive win. 2-4 Baggers for 2-22-195 over Dasha Kovalova. She'll take on Liz Johnson, the three seed next. The PWBA has a Canadian sensation, 28-year-old Valerie Bersier, the 2019 Canada star. PWBA Rookie of the Year. She has represented Canada in international competition since 2013 and made the decision to give the PWBA a shot this year and doesn't regret it one bit.
do truly have to go out and bowl fearless. You have to bowl as if you're the best. And um, sometimes it's not easy to do, but it, it's required. It does take a level of fearlessness that you have to have in order to go and compete with the best of the best. The, the top 16, those girls are really, really, really good. And I know, I talk to a lot of girls that, or women, that won't come out and bowl, you know, because they are fearful. Um, and I, I love that the PWBA has taken that tag. My season so far, well, actually, my season in total, uh, was long and exhausting. When I found out that I officially got Rookie of the Year, oh my gosh, I mean, I'm getting just from thinking about it. Please join us as we present the 2019 PWBA Rookie of the Year Award to Canada's own Valerie Garcia. You know, looking forward eight months from now, I'm looking forward to the Tour Championship. I'm looking forward to possible Player of the Year award. What a great season, Kel, for Valerie joining some really elite company. Yeah, our silent reporter, Stephanie Johnson, new way Fen, all the way from Singapore. You'll see her teammate Sherry again in that final match. Daria Pio from Poland, a lot of international flavor there. Jordan Richard, last year's Rookie of the Year. And then congratulations to our 2019 Rookie of the Year, Valerie Bursier. What a great season. And what a great match we've got coming up here. O'Keefe Johnson, two legends of the game set to go head to head, trying to win a major championship. Here in Raleigh, North Carolina, it's on the way. What a matchup in Raleigh next. Liz, both going for number 25. Yeah. Serena didn't Sweet. quite get there. Just short the US Open. Yeah, that was quite a scene. But I have full faith in Liz. Should be a good match in this match number two. The battle of the Titans begins. With a strike for Liz Johnson. That's seven pin on the second inning. She had hit it twice for it to that fall down, Dave. Down it goes. Interesting shot right here. Just high flush into the pocket. A little bit right to left. Two pin off the sidewalls, makes it stands up, but then kicks it back out again. Four pin tries to take out the seven pin, but the two pin off the sidewall Defined gives it that left there for a <laughs> Back to Shannon. First flat 10 we've seen from Shannon, yep. 10 pin stands, trying for a 13th title. And fifth of the season. It has just been a brilliant year for Shannon O'Keefe. We asked the other bowlers about Shannon, her great year, the string of dominance now in two years. And what came up every time, hard work. You mentioned it earlier, just her dedication to the game is maybe unmatched right now. She is, and I think also being the collegiate coach too, she's always in the in the building with her, her female bowlers and her athletes. She gets to practice too, so it's always putting her in that environment. She's got a good strategy to be there. Also, she's been working with Dr. Dean for years now. And she's got a strong connection with him and his work ethic and his teachings. And that's what's made her mental game so strong that's able to separate her from some of the bowlers out here on tour. Are you seeing the soft release she mentioned to us so far today? So far right now, because Shannon, she really can get aggressive with her ball speed. So when you have a soft hand, you can have aggressive ball speed. She's really maintaining that same level off her hand and uh, controlling the pocket really well. Just one bad shot really so far. She has yeah, my a little in. bit left. Just moved in a little bit left, about 11 12. She was around 7 8 in the first match. Saw Dasha's reaction towards the end there. Liz is a little bit further outside of her. See how this game unfolds. 
Liz now stepping up on the right lane, though. Liz, one of two Hall of Famers in the field. 50 bowlers here in Raleigh, along with Kelly Kulik. Liz. Bringing 10. 10, good shot. good shot. Difference is Shannon's kind of going up the lane. So her lines are really like she's just tracing each of the board on the lane. Liz is going a little bit right to left. You'll see she's sliding about 11, laying it down about 8, and getting it to, here's those white boards there. That's 8, 9, 10. Down at about 43 feet. Again, pattern's 49 feet, ring 10 stands. 10 pin. Got it. Back to Steph. I did speak with ball reps during, um, before Liz's match, excuse me, and she was sitting and watching, of course. Um, they put an asymmetrical ball in her hand. They wanted her to really control the mid lane, and she's seeing that left lane starting to hook. So I will believe that we will see some angle changes here shortly. Maybe again, a little bit outside to in. She's laying the ball down about eight, then hitting 10 down lane. See if she comes into some of that friction that the other players have developed. Third frame for Liz. A touch high. And six ten still up for Liz Johnson. Liz turned 45 this year, and she told us this week it was upsetting <laughs> to her because she's trying to hang on to that greatness. Has not had the season she envisioned. Yeah, see right here. So she's about two or three boards in. I know those lines mm -hmm. are very very wide and dominant, but she's not going to have much hold. So Liz will have to start migrating left with her feet and keep her target maybe the same. So she just kind of goes up the lane straighter, very similar to what Shannon's doing. She might have to go to a little bit early bowling ball to do that as well. Win today for Liz with Tyre with Patty Costello, Tish Johnson for fourth all time. Tour history, 25 wins. Lisa Wagner has the record with 32. Third frame, O'Keefe to go up by 12. Yeah. He'll do just that. Those pins had no chance in the 1-3 pocket. Shannon's grip right there, you see the non-bowling hand in front. She's got all of her fingers taped up here, her index finger there, just because she gets so much pressure on the tip of her finger when she releases the ball. And she uses the wrist device to keep her wrist in a stronger position. Has a lot of tilt. Ball hydroplanes on the lane for a long distance. Traveling to that 1-3 pocket. Saw that win probability, Kel. Looking good for O'Keefe. Left lane, Shannon. Yeah. Strikes again. Nothing but shrapnel back in the pit with another perfect shot for Shannon O'Keefe. Yeah, all the shows this year, Dave, she's really been able to stay in the same part of the lane. So she's really perfected that part of the lane that she's in. The angles are very small and minute. She doesn't have to open the lane really too, too much. Um, so again, she's just in her comfort zone where she's been pretty much all season long. She is focused. Turkey for her for a 22 pin lead. Liz in the fourth works on a spare. Flat 10, unfortunately, for Liz. Ball is just not entering the pocket. Now, because the volume's lighter, Dave, at only 20 milliliters of oil, the ball does slow down early in the front. And again, the length is 49 feet, so the ball is going to lose a lot of energy when it gets towards the pins. It stands up there as the colors try to push, but the 6-pin just lays in front, falls in front of that 10-pin ball, deflects a little bit towards that 9. Has a 10-pin, has her spare. Follow the PWBA on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and on BowlTV.com to keep up with the greatest women bowlers in the world. Get the latest video highlights and news each week to follow your favorites. Liz told us this week, been to a chiropractor recently. She's been battling some back issues, had a lot of knee problems at the start of the season. And she feels the best she has in a long time. One key reason she's on the show today. Ooh, 
the shake or strike there, Dave. She did make the move in the adjustment, but the ball really just isn't kind of, as I say, getting up that hill or slowing down enough. Just doesn't have enough room to get there. It might be and the ball change to something more aggressive. Liz doesn't slow down her speed very well. She's better going the opposite direction. You could see, though, where she last time she came up high because she was going more this direction. Now she's up the lane, and the ball will just tip up at the very last moment to catch that swishy strike. The ladies were very fortunate this week. We had Dr. Eric uh, Axelin here, our chiropractor. Fantastic, the hospitality we received from him, from all the ladies, his work ethic, and everything he did for us to keep us stretched, loosed, and lubricated for the week, if I may say so. Four pin for Shannon. With a nice lead to the midway point of this match. You guys work so hard on tour all year. I mean, you've got to try to. We do. We The hospitality here is great. Right? We wish we had like a massage therapist every week or the chiropractor every week. Unfortunately, we don't. And especially with the sprints that we have, the 16 games on Friday night and then another eight games Saturday morning, the six more games in match play. And then even the elite events itself. This week, the women did bowl three blocks of six and then three rounds of match play, a total of 36 games to get to the show. Shannon has her spare. She's won two majors in her career. Tour Championship 2017 in the Queens last year. What a year it's been for Shannon O'Keefe. Four titles so far, including two of the last three victories in the East Hartford Open and BowlerX.com. Orlando Open, ever the top seed for the PWBA Tour Championship. September 18th in Richmond. Bowler of the Year Award again. Back to back MVP honors for Shannon O'Keefe. All over social media today. Congratulations from USBC and the P PWBA Tour. Four pin this time. Back to back four pins. She told us as she was doing some interviews on Friday, her dad sent her a text, congrats, you have the points clinched, you're player of the year. And she said, no, that can't be right. Let me confirm that she did. And she said, man, that was so emotional. Pretty cool to hear from her, her dad. Yeah, she's really excited. Like I said, she works very, very hard year round, not just during the season, in the off season as well. It's just every day of the week is bowling for Shannon O'Keefe. But this year, no scoreboard watching. She didn't lock in the points race. To get too wrapped up in it, as she did in 2018. It's worked out either way, really. <laughs> as she's the MVP one more time. Shannon O'Keefe, great match. Liz Johnson, two superstars hand to head. We'll wrap up this match next on CBS Sports Network. Shannon, you needed a big performance this week to secure your spot into the tour championships, which you've done. But what's it going to take to come away with a win? It's going to take 10 good shots and see what happens. Back to you guys. All right, then. That was Not basic. just eight. That was very simple. Maybe five. She's ready. She's so ready. She really talked to interview. She's just, she wants to have fun. She, you know, no one said anything about how long it's been or anything. She's really just looking to have fun and some uh, wonderful opportunities coming her way. Short and sweet. I like it. And Shannon told us it's the fastest game you'll ever bowl. Not on TV. It goes by quickly. And you've got to be focused from the very beginning. Big shot here, Liz. Six frame off the break. Strike. Right. And it cuts the deficit now to 11 pins. Liz looks for her 25th POBA title. No stranger to majors, having won an amazing 10 in her Hall of Fame career, including the 2016 and 2017 U.S. Opens. Also, the Players' Championship twice in 2001 and 2017. Emotional. Liz Johnson in Plano won it two years ago and took the green jacket. This year won by Danielle McEwen in Vegas. Really curious about her adjustment. She came up light last time after moving inward off that last high hit. Looks for the turkey seventh frame. She knows these big moments. Looking for help on the 10, not quite. Yeah, this is where it's a little tricky. I mean, only 10 frames, Dave. Looks to me like she went back to the right and just got firmer with her ball speed. The last time up the lane, she swishy striked. Lay down still again, that eight, nine point. Ball to flex, six pin again, falls in front. My choice here for Liz, I would go. She did drill a ball with a little bit stronger pin placement. 
I would go to that ball and just move that slightly bit inward and go up the lane. One of the Buffaloes there, Ricky Buffalo, one of the three bro Buffalo brothers that proprietors here for all four of their centers. Boy, again, the hospitality from, from the Buffalo family, Melissa McDaniel and all of her staff here, Mom Frankie and everyone else, fantastic hospitality. We just thank you for bringing us here, as well as all the centers this year and this season leading up to this point. No doubt, great bowling center here. Seventh for Shannon, works on a spare, has all 10 back. Rushes the rack. Yeah, right now, Shannon really is more in command of this match, really, because I'm watching the ball reactions. It's going through the pin deck. Watch right here where the ball goes. It's going to go through the pocket and continue to go towards the A-pin. Liz's ball is deflecting. It means it's lost a lot of energy and expends it so early, it just deflects and goes away from the A-pin. That's when she starts leaving those flat tens, and if you adjust, it could be the four-pin issue. But right now, Shannon's ball reaction is better. Going. Yeah. Two strikes in a row, advancing her lead a little bit more. Now Liz has to finish this match. She will finish this match at the end. Shannon gets to finish ninth and tenth frame. And Liz is going to have to finish on her tricky left lane. Three Zip for Liz left. Johnson, no question about it. Here's the eighth frame now. Works on a spare and down by 22 pins. Shannon Brown going is feeling it. Stretch, run. Huge shot from this. Will the legend come through? You bet. Pax 10. Maybe your best shot of the match, Cal. That was right through that one three pocket with authority. Yeah, it might have just a, a move one board with her eyes left. So the ball just picks up a little bit sooner, more of a pathway towards the pocket. But that one was definitely flush into the one three pocket. 10 straight back, Dave. Chad House, uh, two lefties on the show. Second time this year, I've had two lefties. Cleveland also. See the max scores there, 236 for Liz, 258 for Shannon O'Keefe. Foundation frame, another huge shot. Liz Johnson. <laughs> wow. Oh, 10 in the pit, we've got ourselves a finish here, Kelly. Yeah, Dave, I'm not sure about that chance. You see all the pins just kind of went, the right side went to the right and the left side went to the left. So not necessarily a powerful strike that we should see from Liz Johnson. And that left lane does have a little perplex. You can see it in her eyes yeah, and in her I mind. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. She's wondering about that left lane. Yeah, like she, the way that the ball went through the rack there. She tried last time to get a little bit further right and to throw it firmer. But see again, the ball deflects her and all the pins just kind of separate as if it was divided in half. Shannon looking to extend her lead, though, for three in a row. Carry. Yes! Gets that carry. And has a 22-pin lead. You just see, I, I believe you just he knows how strong and faithful yeah. Shannon is in her ability and her skill level. Again, just calm. Yeah, yeah, it's Sunday. Bowling's on. Next girl soon be on. Football season starting. Exciting times. Tenth frame. Looking for a 32-pin yes! lead. Wow! Zero chance for the pin to stand, and Brian knows it. And lead up to 32 pins into the 10th frame. That is a professional what? strike. Oh. Yes. She pretty yes. much sealed up this match. Just a few pins here. Liz can only max out for 236, so Shannon. We're going to have a Shannon-Shannon match coming up, Dave. The Shannons. Team USA members, now competitors on the lanes. That first hit was big, makes the ball change for information because she knows she secured the match. And it's gonna be Shannon O'Keefe versus Shannon Klahowski coming up in match number three. Looking to her corner, maybe another ball here. Try it out, why not? Liz Johnson is gonna have to either wait till Richmond for a title number 25 or possibly even till next season. Isn't that something? No title for Liz in 2019. It's been surprising. She bowled so well this week. Said she felt the best she has in a long time and had a lot of confidence going to this show, but she's not the only one who has not been able to overcome 
the O'Keefe train this year. It's been something. And has another win. 257 at Legend Liz Johnson and Shannon Plahowski. One of two southpaws on the show. Number two seed is next for Shannon O'Keefe. It should be a tremendous matchup from Raleigh, North Carolina. A major is on the line. Only one woman can make bowling history here today. We'll find out who that is on CBS Sports Network. Two matches are complete. Shannon O'Keefe, number five seed, has advanced to take on the number two seed. Shannon Plahowski, Battle of the Shannons coming up. Top seed Sherry Tan of Singapore awaits the top of the step ladder. Kim Tierney is here. So great to see her head coach at North Carolina and some of her Aggie players. Kim Tierney, bowling legend and Hall of Famer. Welcome back to Raleigh. So it's the battle, Kelly, of the Shannons coming up. How do you see this one playing out? I think Shannon's going to win, Dave. <laughs> I'm not Good sure. Prediction. You know. Yeah, you know, Shannon O'Keefe right now is just on a hot streak, but Shannon Blahowski, one of two left handers in the finals, and she had some high scores all week long. So it's going to come down to those 10 frames and who's going to win it out in the 10th frame. Well, the Tour Championship is coming up September 18th on CBS Sports Network. The road Richmond will be complete, and we can't wait to see that. Shannon O'Keefe, who has won a couple years ago, looks for another title. And there's so much pressure as well on Sherry Tan as she tries to get there with a win today. And Shannon Plahowski got there by a points by bowling so well here in Raleigh. There were so many women moving around with this last event. The race to Richmond really comes down to this final match. If Sherry Tan does win, she will bump up into that top 16. Josie Barnes is in because she has an X next to her name. She won. But the ladies will head to Richmond starting September 15th to the 18th. You can catch the live televised finals. Dave, I will be there alongside you on September 18th, 8 p.m. on CBS Sports Network. Please come back and join us for that telecast. We can't wait. Hashtag Road to Richmond. Hashtag Hashtag Bowl Fearless CBS Sports Network to wrap up the 2019 PWBA Tour season. And we're going to wrap up our tremendous bowling here in Raleigh today. Shannon keeps dancing. She's happy. She's ready to take on another Shannon. Pluhowski, righty lefty matchup is next. Okay. Jerry Tan, another lefty at the top, top seed. Pluhowski O'Keefe, what a match we've got here. Ready to bowl in Raleigh. <laughs> Hasn't really been tested yet. 3 6 10 stance here for Shannon O'Keefe, beginning her third match, trying to climb the ladder. And in our interview with her the other night, we were asking her about, have you come from the fifth position a lot in majors? It's happened. She's been used to coming from all different positions. To win. Shannon has big crossover steps. She really walks right to left. You can see the ball tracks in the lane themselves when the ball goes down the lane. A couple scenarios could be off her hand. She executed it well, as she always does. Dasha was a bit deeper, so she might have just run into a bit of friction that Dasha created earlier in the practice session. Three six ten spares, no problem. Okay. Jay's clean. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number two seed from Dayton, Ohio, Shannon Plahowski. Eleven and seven match play record to make the show as the two seed. Thirty six games or overall average two thirty one point four seven. As we mentioned, she and Sherry also made the season opening Greater Cleveland open event. Good show for the lefties. Good start in the one-two pocket for Shannon. Shannon's had some really great seasons. She really has. Last year, she came back very strong the last four events. This year, the same thing. Part of it maybe just being Team USA camp and a couple other things. Uh, but she really came on the end. I crossed with her during qualifying, and she she had some room not to not to be taking anything back from her, but she had a little bit of room on the left side. Both phenomenal. 231 average, as you said, Dave, 11 and 7 in match play. And yet her list of gold medals is just endless. Medals for Team USA and everything else. No Local events in the Dayton area as well. Let's go back to Stephanie. 
Yeah, I spoke with the ball reps before their match, and Shannon Puhowski does have three purple urethanes, a strong, a medium, and a weak. And they chose to go with the medium. The left obviously hasn't had any play other than practice, so it's going to come down to seeing what Elaine is asking her to do and making those tweaks as the game goes on. Thanks so much, Seth. Now, strong, medium, and weak. It could be the pin position of the ball itself. It could be the surface prep on the ball itself. But the closer that pin is, the 3 and 3 8 levers, the ball is going to read really, really soon and again just adjust the surfaces along the way. Shannon again with her four step approach, just really covering those three white boards on the lane. So, so accurate. Rob Gottschall gave her a very nice compliment this week. You know, you are the best at executing out here on tour. She really is. Why she won play of the year for the second consecutive season, but you can just see how well how her, her focus is and her mental game and her strategy. It's just worked. Almost a big four there, trips into a four pin forward. Big migration left in the left lane as the lane starts to break down even faster. Wow, that went from major disaster to minor disaster to strike. <laughs> yeah, catches a double. Any player rolls a 300 game during our telecast today will receive a $10,000 bonus courtesy of GoBowing.com. Visit GoBowing.com to find local bowling centers, get tips from the pros, and for all the latest news and information about your favorite sport, bowling. Shannon P looks for the first three, and we'll do that. Rushing the pocket. I mean, those pins stood zero chance. Four-step approach. Sliding about eight, nine, of about two, three. So the whiteboard is board five, four, five. Really, just that slow migration. The thing about urethane, folks, is it hooks early in the beginning and doesn't have a strong motion down lane. It's just that arcing motion because it reads it so much sooner. So Cleveland to begin the season, yep. and then Raleigh to almost finish the season, where you have the two lefties. Why were the lefties so successful this week, Kel? Well, it, it really, only two of them in the field, the length of the pattern, the volume itself, allowed them, to, allowed them to stay in that same part of the lane all throughout qualifying and majority of match play. Sherry Tan in the final match, she really just kind of played with a few different bowling balls. Shannon Pulowski was able to stay with urethane the entire time, but unfortunately, a bit high right there leaving the 6-8 split. The equivalent would be the 4-9 for the right-handers. Let's see lane level what happened. Gets it left a little bit quicker. High on that head pin again, the 6-8 split. Does not convert. So the 6 knocked down the 8 stance. It's an open frame. And as we said for the first match with Shannon O'Keefe, when Dasha Kovalova had an open frame, just that one little glimpse of light is what Shannon's been able to take advantage of on TV with her tremendous records, 8-1 and one now on TV. And she's just rolling opponents left and right. Well, Dasha was 2-0 and oh on TV up until today. <laughs> <laughs> until she met Shannon. Looks for the turkey in fourth frame. Does it again. Up 14 pins. Yeah, you'll see now Shannon O'Keefe's her laydown point is much different on the left lane than it is in the right lane. She's still able to play fairly straight up like that 10-11 zone on the right lane, but the left lane you're going to see a little bit more left to right or in and out. Really, really tight angles. It's what she does so very well. She does have, doesn't have to open up her angles as much as other ladies out here on tour. By keeping everything in front, it's a clear path to her target and to the pocket. It's almost like she's aiming a shotgun at that three pin and just pointing and aiming and hitting it every single time. Strike breakdown, match one and match two. Looking for the four bagger, fifth frame. Not this time, just mm. four. Another good break there. Last time could have been a big debacle, right. and now again, just leaves the four pin much further left on that left lane. Ladies in practice might have jumped in a bit left. This is pair um, seven and eight, I think we're bowling on for the TV telecast. Has not been bowled on all week. Can see the ball track right there in the beginning of where she's laying it down. Almost tripped the 4 7. Single pin, spare conversion. So we have 13 pins. Fifth frame for Shannon Plahowski working on the open. Do you like the LOL dolls? Shirt she's got. It is. It's Those very cute. Pretty cool, right? 
Daughter on back home watching. Dayton, first grade. Yay. <laughs> it's pretty famous out here on tour, right? She is. Oh, Watch out. No. Big four. So last time, six eight, that one off her hand. It just was slower. From back here, you can just see it wasn't as aggressive as she's been. And one of the keys, she said she could be softer this week, but that one picked up so much sooner. And again, once urethane changes direction, it's not going to stop. That's the Richard Nixon. And loses in count two, so that's a tough one. Back to back for Shannon Plahowski, open frame to the lead is 26. Back to Stephanie. Yeah, I spoke with the reps about Shannon O'Keefe on the left lane, and clearly it is hooking a lot more. We may see a ball change here shortly, maybe to something that's going to smooth out the mid lane and get through that spot, but will still give her some strong reaction down lane. Definitely a big difference. I know when I qualified this week, I definitely had a lot of the lanes different. The left lane seemed to hook much more than the right lane. Much better shot off the hand. Packs 10 straight back. Cuts down that deficit just a bit. Well, down Shannon told us this week, Ellen, and we all know her history. She has had some struggles on TV trying to break that long winless streak. The big challenge, Shannon O'Keefe, she's bowling against today here in Raleigh. Wrap up this match next. But who read it the best was Shannon. She got off to a little bit of a slow start during qualifying round number one. And then in round number three, she really came back with a, a big block to get her into match play and just led herself up to that fifth position. Wow. Commercial break. Opponents. It doesn't seem to matter for Shannon O'Keefe. And she stays hot. Sixth frame. Up by 26. Yeah, she's having, like I said, a magical season for herself. Here's a seven. And this strike will give her a double and a 36 pin lead. I mean, it's just the way the pins are responding. The ball reaction has been tremendous. Here's the left lane. That looks pretty good, too, doesn't it? Yeah, it makes a great move on the left lane. Just exploding through the one three pocket. She does, just like your job, I, I think. Again, this is just my opinion, but being the collegiate coach that she is, she's watching her women bowl, all the reactions. She sees ball motion much faster than she used to. She makes ball changes much quicker than she used to. She has the belief and confidence in herself more than she used to. Everything is just climbing in that direction to give her the results that she deserves. Shannon Plowski looking to bounce back and catch a double here on the Needs right lane. Desperately, Kelly, and there's the six pin. Big news with Shannon and coaching, by the way. Yeah, Dave, some really exciting news. So you said she's from Dayton, Ohio, but soon Shannon will be uplifting herself and moving to Lincoln, Nebraska. She is going to be side by side with Paul Klempo, the head coach, as the assistant coach for the Nebraska Huskers. So congratulations to Shannon and everyone else. Such great additions there at the Lady Huskers. Going back to her alma mater and being the assistant coach. All American had a tremendous career at Nebraska, so two collegiate coaches <laughs> officially are here as well. And more congratulations to the greatest bowlers in PWBA history for being the senior master portion of the Women's World Championship and came home with gold. Yeah, you see Tish Johnson and Leanne Barrett there. Leanne barrett Holsenberg, gold in doubles. Standing beside them is Ron Moore and Lenny Borsch also taking home the gold medal. They're continuing on in Las Vegas right now for the team event. I believe the women were leading against Australia. So oh, again, good luck, guys. Good luck. Two Hall of Famers representing us again in the senior division, young at heart. Four pin left lane there for Shannon Plahowski and Tish. Uh, combined for an amazing 52 PWBA Tour titles as they won the title over Germany this year. Shannon Plahowski and Sherry Tan worked the lane in practice, so they burned up a lot of friction right about board two and three on the gutter or close to it. Early friction. She needs to move off it and kind of get the ball off, similar to Shannon O'Keefe, but on the left side, up the lane and not across it. She'll develop more hold that way. Breakdown strike spares. Looks for the turkey here, eighth frame, and a 47 pin lead. Again, in control. Spin her lane. Case in point. 
Trip 10, down it goes. 47 pin advantage. Rosie again. Yeah, it fascinates me, Dave. She hasn't moved her feet hardly at all in the right lane. Again, just staying within those three white boards. She doesn't have to move a lot. Able to keep everything in front of her. And again, repeats, repeats, press play over and over again. Luckily, it was the only challenge, but she made the move. 47 pin lead over Plahowski, but waiting in the sidelines. Your tournament leader, Sherry Tan from Singapore, must win for her to get to Richmond. But can she be enough to defeat Shannon O'Keefe? And there's that left lane, Dave. Just as I said, there's enough breakdown in the front there. She leaves the big four, or as I refer to it as, the Richard Nixon. We'll come up with some good ones. The four or five is, is now good. the Colt. You've got the Woolworths. You've got the five and dime. But <laughs> she leaves the, the Richard Nixon, big four. Yeah, big four, almost impossible to make this. Looks like the 710 it is a very tricky spare conversion. But pins do bounce here. At the 610 and the 4710. So it is an open. It does happen to Shannon. Well, it's interesting now. Okay, so if Shannon Plowski does strike out, that gives her 212. Max score for Shannon O'Keefe, 231. But 212 forces Shannon O'Keefe to mark in the 10th frame if she strikes out. Needs his first hit, Dave. Won't <sighs> get it. Three up. Light three pin. Missed that pocket. Shannon O'Keefe will just have to keep the ball on the lane in the 10th frame in order to advance to the finals. Working her way up the stepladder, Shannon Blowski made the right move, went up the lane a bit more, but it just wasn't enough to start up and hit the pocket flush. Unfortunately, Shannon Blasky will have to wait to Richmond to see if she can get to that TV final match. Great that you made it, Bill. Yeah. Long points. That's tremendous. An accolade for Shannon Blasky. Long time to Team USA member. has had great success in her career. 19 years. 19 years on Team USA. I think going to Nebraska will help her even more with her game. I think so, Just too. being there with the young women, coaching them alongside Coach Paul, you know, working with her game, practicing more often. She's really looking forward to it. Gets 10 right there, Dave. So Michael Jackson, the smooth crowd strike song. It was Autumn's request, Shannon told us. <laughs> and I know Autumn's Autumn at home really watching. MJ. She's watching at home it's right now. Cool. Autumn, be so proud of your mommy, what she yeah. did this week. She bowled Absolutely. fabulous this week. Coming away with a third place finish here in Raleigh, North Carolina. I, again, Dave, I crossed with her in the last round of qualifying. She took the lead over from Sherry Tan. Sherry almost led from start to finish, but Shannon did pop in. It came down to the last game in match play. Shannon had to beat her by one in order to get the top seed. Sherry won that match. So close, but not quite again for Shannon Blahowski. Long wait. It's been since 2006, the USBC Queens and Reno. Well, the exciting news is she gets to go to Richmond next week and make another paycheck. Another chance to win. Another chance. Make some more money and get that title. Dasha Kovalev, Liz Johnson, and now Shannon Blahowski. Shannon O'Keefe just keeps on trucking. No matter who's in her way, she beats him. One more match for a major. At midnight on New Year's Eve to celebrate the New Year. I did not. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number one seed from Singapore, Sherry Tan. Left lane, top seed, starts her day with a strike. Interesting, Kelly, how Shannon Pulhowski's pass that one-two pocket will affect Sherry. 
It is interesting, Dave, because Shannon did use urethane, so urethane typically makes it a bit tighter down the back of the lane because the oil is not absorbed into the cover of the ball itself. You'll see Sherry was using reactive resin bowling ball, a strong asymmetric. She tends to roll it very forward, small path to the pocket. It'll be interesting, but again, Shannon O'Keefe has been on such a roll in the first few matches. Can she keep it up? Eight for 10, eight for 12, and nine for 12 in match number three. Try to do it one more time for a major. Cross lane, the messenger didn't quite spin its way to the 10 pin. A pretty good shot to start off in the right lane. She's been so consistent on the right lane, hardly missing at all. Sliding 16, 17, 11 at the arrows, 11, 12 at the arrows, so about 9, 10 down lane. So again, really tight angles, but the first time the ball hasn't really plowed its way through the pocket, splitting that 8, 9, just deflecting so shortly for the 10 pin. Whiffs on the 10. That is a huge surprise. Yeah, Sean Early Keith, open. One of the best spare shooters out here on tour. She oh, very seldom absolutely. misses spares. I think I've seen her miss two spares in, in, in the last four weeks that I've seen her bowl. Unfortunately, the good thing about it is the first frame, the open frame, so she can move on and past it and focus on the next few frames. One shot more air, the first one ball at a time. Dasha Kovalov won in Wichita, took the Queens, Danielle McEwen. U.S. Women's Open in Vegas, the first two majors. Who is going to win here today in Raleigh? There are the four major championships. This is, what, this is what she wants the most, too. She just wants to win all the majors. So this one and the one that's been eluding her for so long is still is the U.S. Open. Look right here. Cross over with the feet. See the ball track? Just a board and a half inside of that last one. So there is a slight tear. Now there's been enough friction built up on the right side of the lane. She might have to open up her angles just a bit more in the left lane. And I'm talking maybe a two and one. Not a large movement with her feet. Feed it to the friction a little bit further down the lane and let the ball tip up towards the pocket. Three, six, ten, another tough spare. Whoa. Come on. Some early trouble. For Shannon O'Keefe, this is shocking. To see her fall off the rails a little bit here to open up this championship match. And she has been so focused. Now look at the win probability. And it's only through one frame for the top seed, 82 plus percent, with back to back opens for O'Keefe. Sherry's got to be saying thank you. Well, it's still early yet. It's early. But Sherry Tan will take advantage of that. Again, coming off the gold medal Masters win in Las Vegas. A lot of confidence there. She, I interviewed her, David, she said 2018 really was not a good season for her. She felt like she disappointed herself and her teammates in the SEA Games and so forth, some of the Asian Games. But looking forward ahead, the one thing she is missing is that gold medal and team event in the Women's World Championships. And uh, her, her future looks pretty good coming ahead. She was so proud of that. Yes. The Masters win, she told us this week. Let's go back to Steph. Yeah, in our previous match, we saw Shannon Plahowski throwing urethane, but after speaking with Sherry's reps, they opted for her to throw a strong reactive ball where they brought the surface up just in order to get that ball through the hook spot that both her and Shannon had created. Thanks so much, Steph. Bringing seven pin night for there. So, yes, if you bring the surface up, it will allow the ball to go further down the lane. Looks a little bit shiny, so not necessarily polished, but probably 3,000 or 4,000 Avalon. Allows her, again, about seven to about five. You can see the white tracer board down there, and then she has such, again, heavy forward roll. The ball just slowly makes its way to the pocket. A little deflection there. Seven pin stands alone. Everything, Cal, is on the line for Sherry Tan. She it is. has to win here today to make the season-ending tour championship. Otherwise, she goes home to Singapore and will get ready for the SEA Games. The seven pin. So, travel schedule. <laughs> it's uh, it is all or nothing here for Sherry. I it's just incredible what's at stake. And I asked her, are you going to take a break? She goes, I'll take one week off. You know, just, you know, the jet lag for the plane flight and everything. I'll take one week off. But she has the Sam Ho Cup coming up in Korea. And as you mentioned, Dave, the SEA Games, which takes place, takes place at the end of the year in December in the Philippines. Ten pin last time on the right lane. Good strike for Jen. That's got to be relief after the 
Back-to-back -back opens to begin the championship match. Just a shock. To watch it fall apart like that. Did not a lot like of what bowling left. Yeah, Dave did not like what she saw in that left lane making a ball change. Do you like that? I do. I do. I mean, she wants to try to stay as close to that spot as she can. If she gets too far left, I think she's going to get a little bit over under. I said she could open up her angles a little bit more, but she's going to choose to stay on top of it, go to a different bowling ball, and again, keep those angles really tight to that 1-3 th pocket, mainly towards the 3-pin. Left lane looks for the double. Cut it to right. 22, yeah. and we'll do that. Back on track in our title tilt. You see again, her feet really go far left. Ball does not respond to the friction nearly as much. Stays on top of it, pounds the one three pocket again. Ball goes towards the eight pin side. Pretty good ball reaction, but Sherry again. Double nine spare, looking to get back on the strike train again. Good shot. Pack 10 straight back, Dave. Really good shot. Blast through the pocket. And up by 22 pins, nearing the midway point of the championship match. Her best part about her game, Dave, repeatability and execution. Same as Shannon O'Keefe, if you think about it. She's so good at repeating shots. They train so often. There's her sister, Daphne Tan, just to the left. New Wei Fen, he's earlier on, we saw her as Rookie of the Year. We did. And Shana Ung, who will be going to Richmond as she won back in Ronert Park. So maybe the whole team will be going to Richmond to cheer on her fellow teammate, possibly Sherry as well. Fifth frame. Oh, Tan in the pit again. 32 pin lead for Sherry Tan. The sister Daphne made the Queen's show in Wichita. Great bow in her own right. She's a super fan right now for Sherry. Indeed, and this is the first time Shannon O'Keefe has felt any sort of pressure in any of the matches. Probability 88% to 11%. It was always in Shannon's favor, but she's a great player. Fifth frame looking to work on three in a row. Turkey here cuts it to 22. Time is now for Shannon. She's been good on the right lane. Catches the three in a row, Dave. Cuts it to 22. Really good on that right lane. Just shrapnel back in the pit. And she blasts right through that one three pocket with authority. What a strike. Yeah, you can't look backwards. You just have to keep moving ahead. So the first two frames are already behind her. You can see she hasn't had to move nearly as much on the right lane as she has on the left. Two balling it right now, so one ball in one lane and a different ball in the other. Trying to hit that one three. First in points, first in earnings, first in TV shows, first in wins. What a season. But O'Keefe tested now. Left lane. Seven will stand. That one floated away from her just a tad, and I really mean a tad. Again, 49 feet. There's only that 11 feet, so there is a volume of oil that hasn't been used. No one's gotten that deep in. You can see the ball trying to get back towards the pocket and tip, and it was just what we call a little bit more slow response. She's missed two spares so far, but I'm going to say she's going to convert this seven pin. Little celebration. She, <laughs> because does. she made the single pin spare conversion, takes down the seven pin. But Kelly, it's going to be a great finish. Yeah, smile on Shadow Keith Sherry Tan. A must win for her. She's in the lead. Join us soon. Four quarters, 15 minutes each. Sunday football it's is great back. Time great it time is. Here. Great match here. Good Sherry Tan. 23 pin lead. Trying for a major and trying to clinch a spot in the season ending tour championship September 18th in Richmond. It's up the lane. On the line for her. And back for her. Three in a row. Hashtag one team SG, one team Singapore. 
she really, Sherry almost led it from beginning to end. Shannon Plahowski had taken the advantage in the last qualifying block to go ahead of her. But as I said, Dave, early on, it came down to the last game in match play. Sherry defeated Shannon Plahowski, 259 to 246. She defeated Shannon O'Keefe. The reason why she's the number one seed, again, high scores on the telecast. Can she keep the striking going? Left lane for the lefty. It's going to be high. Ooh, yes. carries all 10. All 10 back again for the top seed. A little trying for on that one. first career major. Winner of the title 2016 PWBA Tour Storm Sacramento Open, California. It's the one level that you know, uh, league bowlers and bowlers, USBC members, do not get to see from that level. You get to see the ball motion as it's traveling down the lane. So great job by our camera crew to get the angles that they do. Numbers for Shannon trying to climb the ladder up a little high. And leaves the four pin. She's running out of time. Bowl TV delivers live multi-channel coverage of the PWBA Tour, Team USA, and USBC Collegiate and Youth Tournaments. Plus, watch hours of new instructional video, classic bowling telecast, and behind-the-scenes content each month. Visit BowlTV.com to subscribe today. Bowling lives here. It's alive and well in Raleigh, that's for sure. Corp in there, Shannon, focused. Sherry has been very efficient. With a four-bagger heading into her eighth frame. And look at the lead at 44 pins. The double open, double whammy for Shannon to begin the championship match, really her undoing. That was surprising. It is, it was, it very was. I mean, she very seldom misses a single pin spare. The 3-6-10 is a... Is a to me, it's a slightly complicated spare because the angle that you're shooting it. But again, Shannon O'Keefe is an excellent spare shooter out here on tour. Again, two balls, one on the left lane, one on the right lane, keeping those angles in front of her. Came up light last time for the seven pin. No mistakes now for Shannon. And none there. Comes back with the strike. With Sherry Tan working on four in a row, now looking for five. I think five is Yahtzee, maybe, but she's just been in control. When she averaged 232 or 236 throughout the weekday, that means you miss about four times a game. And that's still with a nine count on each of those frames, eight count maybe here and there. But as you can see, if she keeps striking out, only missing one, she'll shoot 279. The best Shannon can do is 225. Looking Looks to for extend the, the lead. Five bagger and the nickel. That's what it's called. There's a 10 pin. Yep. Standing for her. Only career title we talked about in Sacramento in 2016. And she beat Shannon Blahowski. We'll show it today. A double in the 10th and one by three pins that day. This one might not be as close. She has been in control. Well, Shannon will finish the match, so Sherry has to show up on the left lane. That one a little bit fast with her feet, got a little too fast away from her, not really in balance or post of the shot at the end. Leaves the 10 pin cross lane for the spare. Got Look out. Whoa. Too much. And a miss of a 10 pin. Wow. Creates an opening. Yeah, so Shannon opened early on. Sherry right there. Cut the max score from about 260 now to 246. Interesting what happens. So Keith heading into her foundation frame, works on a strike. And there is a chance. Look at that. Pace in the max for Sherry. It's currently 5.50 a.m. on Monday <laughs> in Singapore, plus 12 hours from Eastern time. It's a better the shot. Fans are watching. Tough, and then and some help ten. wait Fall for really Sherry late. Tan. Even Shana was surprised by that when I was little two. When the ball the pin, the 9-10 was the last to fall. Doesn't quite seem possible, but it was. Let's go Singapore. Shannon O'Keefe holds her fate in her hands. 225 max score. Sherry could go nine spare strike in the 10th and win by one. But again, it all happens what Shannon does here in frame number nine. Needs to keep it close. She's been very consistent on the right lane.
Keeps that up. Cuts the deficit to 21 pins. I'm not sure she liked this one off her hand. Sliding 17, got a little bit further right. Not much, I'm, I'm saying a board. That's how accurate she is. Ball comes back, it's been her go-to lane so far. Left lane's been a little bit complex, but she struck the last time up. That's a good way to describe it, Kel. Yeah. Complex, <laughs> challenging for the bowlers today. His first hit, Dave. Chad's got to have it. Left lane. Oh, and the nine, nine pin, pin stands. Is up. So 204 max score. <laughs> Sherry just needs some good count in the tenth frame. That's it, Dave. Wow, all that way up the ladder to leave the nine pin just a bit high on that left lane. Unfortunately, Dave, those two open frames in frames number one and two cost her the match. So it appears Shannon's going to have to wait to win her first ever Players' Championship. Two-time major champ in her career. She's won in Richmond. That's where we're headed next to wrap up the 2019 tour season. Sherry Tan will join us in Richmond, it appears. A little too late. What a run for a keep up the ladder. Bowling the best in the world. Sherry Tan just needs five pins on this first ball. She's five. going for Stay behind the foul line. To win it. That's it for Sherry. 20,000 in her pocket. Her second title is a major. Needs five pins. Sherry Tan has ten pins. And has the win. She has won the 2019 Cubica AMF PWBA Players Championship here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Her first career major. And she is going to Richmond. So unfortunately for Tanya Rumapur, she will drop out of the top 16 with this win from Sherry Tan. She does seclude her spot, but unfortunately Tanya will drop out. Dramatic point for Sherry Tan, the number one seed. And her first win on tour since 2016. It was all or nothing for Sherry Tan here in Raleigh, and she delivers what a moment for the star from Singapore <laughs> fans enjoy it why not it's over <laughs> Sherry Tan is a winner and for the first time in her career a major champion her sister, her teammates, hugs and high fives all around. We'll hear from Sherry, the winner, here in Raleigh in a moment. For now, it's time to get that trophy and a check and celebrate for Sherry Tan, a champion in Raleigh today. All smiles for Sherry Tan of Singapore. Cubic AMF, PWBA Players Championship winner. And Kelly, we check in with the BPA moment of the match. A strike in the ninth after a spare in the eighth for Sherry Tan. Seal the deal. Yeah, right here, Dave. She steps up after missing that 10 pin, but of course, bouncing right back in the ninth frame and throwing that clutch strike. Stephanie Johnson joined by the happy winner. Here to present the championship trophy is Eric Weimer from Cubica AMF, the East Coast Regional Sales Manager. On behalf of everyone at Cubica AMF, congratulations on an amazing tournament. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Careful there, it's heavy. 
All right, Sherry, so first and foremost, congratulations. Thank Is you. there anybody you would like to thank? Well, I have a long list, so <laughs> everyone get ready. Yeah, first of all, I'd like to thank Singapore Bowling and Singapore Sports Institute, because without them, I would not be here competing. And I have to thank Roto Grip and Turbo Grips for giving me all the support I can get. And lastly, Cubica AMF, BowlerX.com, GoBowling.com, Nationwide, Pepsi, and Buffalo Lanes North. Yeah. <laughs> What about all the fans here supporting you? Yeah, I would also like to thank my family, my teammates down there. Make some noise. <laughs> yeah. and, and all the great fans out here today. Absolutely. All right, let's get to it. You were the number one seed the first event of the season, finishing second. You're the number one seed again this event, finishing first. What do you think was the difference this time around? P9. <laughs> no, I mean, I, mean uh, I had great momentum coming in here, but, and I, I just bought as well as I could, and I'm really glad the pins fell today. <laughs> Again, congratulations. Enjoy your win. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Stephanie, thanks so much. And what a moment for Sherry Tan. It's 6 a.m. on Monday morning, and the bowling fans there are celebrating now, to be sure. And join us. September 18th, 8 o'clock Eastern for the last show of the year, the PWBA Tour Championship for the Old Dominion Building at the Richmond Raceway. The road to Richmond will be complete.